Hey there, welcome. Um, I was just sitting here contemplating my day 23 bracelet and I was looking at my desk and a couple things jumped out at me so I thought I would play around with them on camera see what pops up so uh, you'll recognize this shell from the most recent um, bargain bead box and then these beads were also in there which I'm obsessed with unfortunately there were only four um, and I've already tested out a technique on one of them. So I also found this in my stash from Emma. It's a mermaid button. And um, I was looking for a ring because I want to make a leather uh, bracelet. So this is one of those split rings that I had. Um, I found this when I was looking for the ring. It's a vintage charm from some jewelry that my grandma, I inherited from my grandma. Um, Unfortunately, I don't know which grandma. I think it was my grandma Mary. And um, I found some spacers. Um, I'm going to use this leather for the barrel knot closure with the button. And um, I found these beads from Christine White Style. And then um, this is the technique. I mean, I'm going to use this metallic luster um, paint from Deco Art for a technique on the beads. I've already. Um, tried it out on one of them and it's just to put some gold detail on the barrel beads to make them pop a little bit more and you can see I have gold paint on my fingers honestly this looks way more involved than it is it's just rubbing paint on a bead um, I might seal them later but I probably won't wear this bracelet enough for me to wear off this um, paint and I got this idea from somebody in the comments um, and she actually said she had a mistake where she was painting one of the beads with mica powder and <laughs> sneezed or blew and the mica powder went everywhere and I, I totally feel her pain. I'm so sorry that happened, but thank you for giving me a great idea. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I don't know where this bracelet's going to take us. I don't know what I want it to look like. I think I might grab um, some uh, Mother of Pearl beads too and I don't know if this guy's going to make it way in there we'll see so um, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off okay start. so the first thing we're going to do is add some paint to the rest of these beads um, I'm just grabbing my wax it's wax paint uh, so if mine is a little dried out you could put some water in here I don't really need to if you keep digging you're gonna get uh, a more wet paint so I'm just using my fingers you can use a paintbrush it's easier for me to guide the paint on my finger I'm putting the uh, bead on one of my needles. Uh, actually, one of my uh, viewers said, you know, after they watched me painfully paint the patina beads or patina on the beads the other day, um, they said, well, can't you put it on a head pin and then use an earring stopper? And I was like, yeah, you could. That was a great idea. So um, I didn't go as far as to grab a, an earring stopper, but I did grab my needle so I can hold the bead a little more easily. And you just want to be light handed with this. My paint isn't really wet enough but it, it's working for when I need it to. And I'm just lightly dusting it. So it's grabbing um, grabbing the, the peaks of the bead, the facets, instead of the entire bead. And if you don't like it, rub it off. You can, you can wipe this off. So it kind of looks like a net, um, like a, a net, a fishing net, a little bit, since it's gonna be a sea themed bracelet. Are you guys surprised I'm doing another sea themed bracelet? Probably not. But, all right, so we have that bead done, and that'll dry pretty quickly. We'll slip another one on my needle, and we'll go for this one. See, it's drying on my fingers really fast, and normally you probably don't want to stick your fingers in this kind of paint because it can cause mold, um, which is pretty normal, and you would just scrape out the mold and move on about your day. Um, I haven't had that happen yet, but I've heard it's a possibility, so I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. just lightly I don't really need it to be very uniform just want it to kind of be organic and then I'll just wipe off any extra so there's our third bead and we'll do the last one and then I'll just clean up this paint and we'll move on
usually this paint is not this dried out. I could go over there and open up a different color and it'd be much fresher, but I use the gold more, pretty much more than any other color besides the silver. I have, I think I have just about every color and I haven't used them all. There is another type called um, Inca Gold and I only have very small tester jars of that, but there are a lot of colors of Inca Gold. Okay, so we have all four of our beads painted. I'll let those dry for a couple minutes. This one I want to put a little bit more paint on the top here. And the the fact that these beads are matte is how the 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 paint that's how they're grabbing the paint. So if they were shiny, I wouldn't really be able to do this. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, next, um, this button is so gorgeous, but I want to bring it out a little bit more, and it's a little too bright for the bracelet that I'm making. Um, the golds and everything else are a little bit more muted and um, some of the spacers have black on them so I'm gonna very lightly and I do mean lightly patina this with black patina by Vintage and Ranger um, I'm going to use onyx uh, if you haven't watched my other patina video all you have to do is shake up your patina I have a bowl of water and off of screen and a paper towel and a paintbrush so I'm just going to put a teeny tiny bit in a this is just a recycled food container and you know what this is I might need to unclog it yeah, I'm gonna have to get like a needle or something and unclog this oh there we go so I just put a teeny tiny bit I mean really that's probably that's definitely more than I'm going to need um, I'm going to take the button and my patina I'm going to coat this. Oh, it's the only one I have and I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> so I'm going to coat the button as quickly as possible in the areas where I would like the patina. Put the um, brush in water. I'm going to take, I'm going to wet my, pa my paper towel just a little bit and then wipe the button until I get the look I would like. I'm wiping off a little bit more, but I was panicked because I didn't want to ruin this button. Okay, actually that's kind of looking though, exactly how I wanted it. Sorry, I'm trying to do this on camera, but I want to make sure it turns out, so... I'm going to take a little bit more water and just dab in an area where the patina didn't come out the way exactly the way I wanted it to. Okay, as you can see, I can add more if I want. Um, I actually think I'm going to add just a teeny tiny bit to her um, scales because um, I want those to stand out just a little bit more. Now my paintbrush is wet, so it's going to change it a little bit. And I'm just going to dab now because since the paintbrush was wet, the saturation wasn't the same. There we go. Okay, and we've toned down the button a little bit, and you can definitely see the mermaid more. I really like it. It looks more antique. It looks like an antique coin <coughs> rather than a bright, shiny button. Both ways are beautiful, but for this bracelet, it's going to work out a little bit better this way. All right, I'll clean this up. I'll be okay, right. so even though I'm going to use leather on this bracelet, it is not a leather bracelet. Um, this is going to be a strung bracelet, so I just, sorry, I have patina all over my fingers. Um, it is just going to be some beading wire. Um, I'm going to string on my button first. So actually, I'm going to string on my crimp bead first. And then my button and you don't have to put the button on first I'm just doing it to have a bead stopper on my bracelet and go from there okay and I'm gonna flat crimp this uh, with I have these are very poor quality crimp beads I have no idea where they came from because I didn't save the packaging when I put them in my organizer <clears throat> 
wish I would have so I never buy them again so I'm just going to flat crimp these because uh, folded crimps really don't work with these very well just make sure that your um, tails or your wires are not overlapping each other when you flat crimp or when you regular crimp actually so I'm trying to there we go they're separated oh, and of course I'm not in screen okay so the, they're separated I'm just going to squish my crimp and see this is a poor poor crimp let's see let's try if, I see if I can salvage it if not it's just a crimp I can grab another one uh, yeah I think that's good enough so we have enough movement on the button that there's not going to be an issue I'm not gonna see this crimp when it's on my wrist and then we'll go from there I just cut a length of wire it's not on the spool still and then um, we are going to start piling on our beads so i'm going to use these <clears throat> i did break out some other bead caps um let's see i have those um, i'm going to scooch in a little bit for this part because the beads are pretty small oh, i still have paint on my table okay and i grabbed I grabbed these beads, but in person they're a little too orange for this. Um, these all look the same and this just kind of stands out. So I, I might use them, but we'll just put those to the side. I also grabbed these beads from Christine White Style. Um, here's our ending ring and our charms. So these aren't gonna go on until later, so I will put those to the side. And, oh, I also grabbed um, these barrels. It's the best descriptor I have of them. I actually really like those, and I want one to go next to, even though they're not exactly the same color, they're close enough. I want them to go next, one to go next to the um, mermaid, and I also grabbed these. Now, that's a lot of gold. I have these water, so these ceramic watermelon open beads and I also have watermelons on the brain today so you might be seeing a watermelon bracelet coming up soon they're the same green teal color but I think they're a little too big for this situation <laughs> so okay I'm thinking this through I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking about what's in my stash too Ooh, these beads just came in today I don't know if they would look nice though they came from Pam well that is nice I might use one of those <gasps> what is this I have these crystals that are the same color but they're very big and I want this to be more matte okay so no I think I'm going off on too many tangents here um, let's see All right, we'll just get started. It's not like it has to be 12 inches long. It's only going to be about, s the bracelet part is probably going to be about six and three quarters inch long. Maybe not even that long now that I'm thinking about it. It's probably going to be about six inches long. So I'm going to grab one of these barrels. I'm going to scoot the camera back up because it's too close now. Okay, I'm going to grab one of these barrels and string it on next to my button. And I like how that covers up the crimp bead. Yeah, I like how that looks. And I'm going to play around and see how this looks next to the barrel or if I need a bead cap let's see mm, I think that's a bit much okay 
I'm liking that a lot. And I want to get more of this teal in. So I'm going to check. I think I might have some matte teal crystals. I'll be right okay. back. So I found the beads. They're not matte, but they're very close. I'm just trying to figure out how I would incorporate these to um, enhance these beads and not take away from them. So if I put another barrel... We might not be even using these because I really like these barrel beads. And then let me cut this open. Ooh, I like that. Okay, yeah, I like that. So that'll be our, hopefully with this pattern, we will have, the bracelet will be long enough because I only have four of these glass beads. Oh, this is really fun. I like this bracelet already. This is so pretty. Okay, um, I'm going to measure this because I want to make sure that it's not too long. When I add in the ring and then the barrel knot, it might, it's, it's, this part only needs to be a certain length. So grab this. Right now we are at about four inches, not including the button. And then we'll add an inch so five inches and six. Okay, so we're good. I think we're good to add the last barrel. Grab one more of these. And I think because I'm going to um, then put on the ring, I'm going to put on one bead cap. It, shouldn't be too bad yeah, it's not too big and um, then we're going to I'm going to double check the lengths this is so pretty it should be good yeah it should be it should be fine uh, the, I can make it I can make it um adjustable if it's not long enough but let's see Okay, we're going to put on our ring. So I'm just going to put on a jump, I'm um, sorry, not a jump ring, a um, crimp tube, crimp bead actually. And I'm going to put on our split ring that's making up for our ring to hang our charms. And I'm going to, this is way too long, bring this down to our bracelet. Sorry, my fingers are in the way. Um, I'm going to pull this through a couple of the beads. And you've heard my explanation for why I do this before. It's not to reinforce the bracelet. So, all right. Okay, 
I'll go ahead and make sure that that's a little, it's a little loose so it's not too rigid. I always curl it like that so we make sure that we have enough space for when it um, is on my wrist and it's not just one straight line. That wouldn't work for anybody. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and flat crimp again. Here we go. And I'm going to go in here and crimp this, or not crimp, but snip the tail. Make sure, like, I almost snipped the entire bracelet, geez. All right, so make sure you just get the tail, not the bracelet wire. Today it doesn't feel like snipping. There we go. So there's the first part of our bracelet. It is so cute. Oh, I am in love with this. This is so beautiful. <gasps> I love it. Okay, so then... Um, Oh no. Well, it got it around the thin part of the um, split ring, but I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so next I'm going to put on a barrel knot closure for the button to slip through, and we're also going to um, embellish this ring with some dangles. So I am definitely putting this shell on. I know it doesn't match, but I love the shell, and this is really what I wanted to focus the entire bracelet on. Um, so I want the button to be that way, so we'll do it like that. Okay, and then this guy's a little big to go with the shell. I don't know if I have a gold one of these. Um, and I couldn't find my bag of sea charms because I've used them recently. Uh, the other thing I have, oh, I can make one, I can make this guy into a dangle. Yep, I'm doing that because he's really pretty. And then I also got out my, um, stuff from I think I can't remember if this is from I got the same things from cherry tree and lima I think these are from lima beads Ooh, I forgot about those buttons sorry I'm getting sidetracked so I'm trying to decide which little guy I'm going to put no not pink no it's purple I think uh, we have a tr no not the right color oh, wait I have more I have more of course um, we have this, this guy is a contender. Yellow, no. And who else? We have purple, we have a darker yellow. I like that, I actually really like the yellow. Do I like it more than the aqua? No. I don't know. We'll leave both of them out. <laughs> uh, I'll decide. I'm usually pretty decisive once I get to a certain point, so I'll leave both out. I also have clear and a darker, I think, sea glass color aqua. So I have that one. No, don't like that. Do not like that. Okay. And then we also have, these are from Cherry Tree, the other ones were from Lima. This blue color, just a little darker than the other blue color. So do I want, which one do I want to use? That's really pretty. You know, I'm really liking, I don't know why, you know, I love turquoise, you know, I love aqua, but I'm really liking that yellow. It ties in the gold. Okay, so I know it's not that one. Process of elimination. <laughs> okay. Yellow. Or blue. Gosh, too bad I'm not doing this video live so you guys could tell me what you like better. But this will eventually be my bracelet, so I need to be the one who makes the decision. Um, I th think we're going to do the barrel nut and then I'll decide. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so the aqua um, sand dollar won out. I have some 
wire and some uh, head pens. I'm going to um, wire wrap. I think I'm going to wire wrap this guy. Ooh. So yeah, because I already can tell this has been chipped a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I'm going to wire wrap it instead of just putting in a um, putting on a jump ring. I will attach it with a jump ring. Um, same with this guy. I'm going to do the exact same thing. And then this, I'm going to use a head pin and try to wire wrap it. These I don't think are the best head pins, but just as long as the head part doesn't come through the hole, we'll be okay. And then I'll attach that with a jump ring too. Please forgive my wire wrapping skills here. It's not my favorite thing on earth. However, I have gotten better at it. It's just not my favorite thing. <laughs> Um, do I have another pair of, yes, here we go. I like to, when it's this small, grab the end of the head pin with another pair of pliers to wrap around instead of use my fingers. It's just a little, it's more precise. just go around until I usually until I feel like it or until there's not enough left go grab it one more time and then I will come back and snip off the rest in a minute now I'm going to take my wire I just got this from I think this came in a kit from Christine white style Going to snip off a piece of wire from this. And I'm going to be very, very careful while wrapping this because, like I said, it's already chipped. Okay, I'm going to try to wire wrap this on camera. I'm not going to promise that it'll be any good. <laughs> so I stuck through one end. One end is shorter than the other. The shorter end I will bring down and quickly wrap around the longer strand of wire just a couple times. There we go. And I'm going to snip that. And this is going to be a very messy wire wrap because I think it goes with the bracelet. I'll take my um, uh, pliers. It's actually one of the best wire wrappings I've ever done, ever. <laughs> um, bend that back, bring this around, and then I will bring the tail to the back. And while I'm wrapping, I'm going to hold this loop, which will actually be twisted to the other side in a moment. And I'm just going to messy wrap this as many times as I can. This shell's a little floppy, and trying to do it on camera is really makes me less coordinated. So, I'm actually, you guys get the picture. I'm going to finish right wire wrapping it off screen, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here we go. I can do several things, but wire wrapping on camera is just not one of them. I'm so sorry that I couldn't show you how that how that ended up working out but this looks absolutely gorgeous um okay he is going to hang there we're going to have this little guy oh i forgot i have to trim off his tail okay we're gonna have this little guy and then i also wire wrapped my c not my seashell my um, sand dollar so i just want to figure out what the order will be. I'm trying to see how this, okay. So it may, the way it lays is very important. So once we have the bracelet like that, we want there to be these guys. I think that's good enough. And then I'll just put on my little jump rings. I'm 
Hmm. I wonder if these, oopsie, I wonder if these jump rings will go around. Yeah, they should. But now I need to do this again because I lost the orientation. So if we put the, oh, the button's not supposed to go through there, duh, Brittany. Button goes through the barrel knot. I get with it eventually, guys, I swear, <laughs> I promise. So, okay, so she is twisted like this. That. I just want to make sure because I had a little bit of an issue with the heart on my cactus bracelet. Okay, I'm okay with that being like that. All right, and um, I don't want to ever repeat that issue again. So measure twice, cut once, right? But in this situation, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, we'll put that on there. Okay, there's our first charm. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with this person. I say that every time, but guys, like, first of all, you know I love jewelry. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to try something new today. So, and I don't think I'm going to make one that a matching bracelet. I think this guy stands alone. friend Lisa just sent me a picture I bet you she's sending me a picture of her her newest bracelet on Instagram guys I love that you're tagging me in your um, things on Instagram that you're showing me your jewelry I want to see please tag me it makes me happy um, but those of you who are actually following along with me I'm loving your bracelets you guys are an endless source of inspiration and I love that you guys have been inspired by this challenge too oops Since these jump rings are a little tight, can the what, uh, pliers slip a little bit. So, and then we have our last little guy right here. I love it when I can't like wait to wear a bracelet. That means you you're happy with your work. Okay. I wish I had like a little gold shell and eventually if I ever find one in my stash or at a store or whatever I'll probably add one to this bracelet because I would love to have a little gold shell right there but oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness look at this adorable bracelet isn't it so yummy thank you guys for watching so much um thank you to Emma for this beautiful bracelet and this beautiful leather and uh guys this the rest came from bargain bead box the and uh eh, i think this one came from where did this come from cherry tree but thank you so much for watching here's today's bracelet day 23 uh, I appreciate every single one of you. If you guys know somebody who would be interested in this challenge or interested in learning how to make this bracelet, please share the video and please like and subscribe. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.